Hey guys, so I'm catching up on 2021 movies to see what are the best movies of 2021 and I thought I'd give this movie its own video. It came out in August, it got its wide release, but literally no one is talking about this documentary. The name of this documentary is Sabaya and it's a Syrian documentary. It's not very popular because of the way this movie was released. This documentary was, re was produced by MTV, which is a subsidiary of Paramount, and this movie was released directly to Paramount+. Plus. Paramount+, Plus is not one of the bigger streaming platforms. It doesn't really compare to Netflix or Amazon Prime or Disney+, Plus. but this movie was released on Paramount+, Plus, and I think this is probably the most important movie of 2021 in what it does but yet no one is talking about it. I went to see how many people rated it on IMDb, and it only has about a few hundred people rating it on IMDb. But this is definitely one of the best documentaries I've seen in the past year, and probably even going further back than that. This is an absolutely brutal watch, but it really is an important watch. Let me give you the rundown on what this movie is about. So this takes place in Syria. This is a Syrian documentary. Uh, so you have an ISIS group that's going after a ethnic minority called the Yazidi in Syria. This ISIS group is kidnapping the women and placing them in these camps. And these women are being sold to different men. They're being raped, beaten, forced into Islam. And the documentary follows this humanitarian group that is going to smuggle these women out of this camp. And this is all hidden camera, all guerrilla style filmmaking. So the hidden camera thing, the whole movie you watch it and you're like, how the fuck did someone catch this on camera? This is such a dangerous situation and not only was this humanitarian group who was doing this act brave enough to save these women, but a crew of documentarians were also following them, and there's so many close calls in this documentary. Uh, gunfire going on, and them running away, and it really ga gave me chills, and I'm still having chills talking about it right now. And somehow, despite it being a guerrilla-style documentary. Uh, it's still beautifully shot. There's shots of Syria where you get to see how these people are living in the poverty they live in, and it's somehow really well shot despite it being a very guerrilla style documentary. The whole documentary I was watching this, and it kind of reminded me of something like uh, Anthony Weiner documentary. It was called Weiner. Not, not in terms of subject matter, but just that reaction I got of how the fuck did someone get all of this on camera? And it's, th this movie is the first documentary to make me do that in quite a while. This is a very brutal documentary. This is not an easy watch. Uh, as I was watching this, I, I nearly cried at some moments. And you see headlines in the news of uh, this po politician did this XYZ, which caused this in the Middle East. And it's so disconnected that you don't really feel anything because it's just a headline. But movies like these, like Sabaya, make you realize how important filmmaking is and how important documentaries are because seeing it is a lot more different than just hearing about it or receiving the information via news. Uh, so you're following this uh, organization who's trying to save these women, take them out of this concentration camp, you, but you're also getting a look at these rape victims and that's what was absolutely brutal to me is that not only were these women beaten and abused and raped but they were also psychologically manipulated what they would do in these camps is they would kind of brainwash these Sabaya women uh, into thinking that their families will no longer accept them because they have been raped so uh, they're skeptical on re reuniting with their own families. They don't want to see their own families because they're scared of how their families will react. And that is something 
that you just don't really think of, like that kind of psychological torment that goes on. There's a, another woman in this documentary who, uh, even when she was saved by the organization, she refused to remove her burqa because she was scared of what would happen. Even weeks after she was saved, she didn't want to remove the burqa. And some of these women would have to, uh, once they were saved, they would have to re-enter the, the camp in order to identify other women and save them as well. And the bravery these women had to overcome in order to do that. Uh, imagine going to the place where you were beaten and raped. Uh, it's really something else. These women are definitely courageous for doing that. And so was this organization, group, uh, organization for doing that as well. Um, there's, all, there's a part in here where uh, the documentarians are doing an interview and they go into the one of the prisons that are detaining some of the ISIS members and you just see how they're living in this prison and they're li literally living on top of one another and they're interviewing one of these guys and he had one of these kidnapped women as a wife and he kind of rejected the notion at first and the interviewer asks questions and at the end of the interviewer he at the end of the interview he finally admits uh, yes I did have a Sabaya woman as a wife uh, it was such an eye-opening documentary uh, where I, I I was aware of some of the things that went on in this documentary beforehand but again it was just through headlines but just seeing it before you seeing a woman break down because of that t tormentation that went on in her life. And um, a lot of these women too were not even old. They were like maybe seven or eight or 10. They were young children in this documentary as well who were victims of this. Um, such an eye-opening documentary and it's so friggin' frustrating. This is what I hate about film. A movie like this that should get so much attention because of not only the filmmaking, the film is a good documentary regardless of its subject matter, but even that aside, the story it's telling, how it's taking the story that isn't talked about in media and bringing it to the forefront, yet no one is fucking talking about it. And I thought this would be some random production company in the middle of nowhere who distributed this, but this was distributed by MTV and Paramount. And somehow it's not getting any attention whatsoever. And yes, it's because the platform is shitty, Paramount Plus. But that's not an excuse. Like, why aren't film journalists talking about this movie? It's absolutely jarring to me. There, one of the documentaries that went viral this year was the Woodstock documentary, Woodstock '99: Peace, Love, and Rage. Um, and that. I like the subject matter of that documentary. I thought that Woodstock 99 is an interesting event, but it wasn't a well-done documentary, and the subject matter pales in comparison. When you watch this documentary, you're like, how the fuck is no one talking about this movie? It's absolutely eye-opening. And it's a movie that deals with very relevant themes in 2021, uh, talking about human trafficking, and sexual abuse and rape and yet no one is talking about this documentary it really pisses me off i wish more people talked about this documentary who knows maybe come oscar time they will nominate this for best documentary i truly doubt it i hope they do but this is absolutely a brutal watch but it's a watch that needs to happen i think that Sabaya is the best documentary of 2021, of the ones I've seen. I have one more to watch on my list, but I doubt it's going to, uh, I doubt I'm going to like it more. Uh, guys, please spread the word on this documentary if you haven't, and give it a watch if you haven't. This is an absolutely eye-opening documentary, and we need more movies like this, just more guerrilla-style journalist documentaries. Yeah, go check it out. I hope you guys enjoy it.